Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics. Now today finally is City of Ash 2, the big one. Lots of people are scared of this dungeon and rightly so as well. It's still pretty difficult, but we're going to show you all the mechanics of all the bosses, ad pulls and all that good stuff. We're going to be using the same setup as before. One tank, one healer, one stamina DPS and one magic DPS, making sure that no rolls are left out. Here we go. Now the beginning of this dungeon is kind of misleading on purpose. It makes you think that everything's nice and cozy and safe but it is definitely not now you start off with a few tigers at the top as we first came in which i skipped but now we've got one inside the tree which is not a problem tank can hold it still and a dps can kill it as we go down the ramp be careful not to jump because you will kill yourself if you jump too far um there will be a couple more basic ads so there'll be a couple of stranglers at the bottom if you interact with those you have to kill them and of course there's a couple of tigers along the road as well now, if you walk into the water, you're going to get aggroed by crocodiles, so just be careful of those. You don't really need to pull them, but you can if you want. If it's for the sake of XP or just killing everything, then sure, go for it. But again, two tigers, nothing really too stressful. Hold them still, pin them up, and kill them. Really, really low health. Not really stressful at all. The same with this part up top here. There will be some stranglers either side of the pavement or the path, if you like. Now the tank can literally just taunt these and make sure that they've got aggro while the DPS burn them down. They're very low health, less than a couple hundred K each. And the only threat they, they pose is when they basically chain you in, which again can be avoided just by staying really close to them and kill them. It's not hard. However, it's now about to get more difficult because the enemies are gonna change. Instead of the, the jungle stuff with stranglers and tigers and crocodiles and all that good stuff, you're now gonna start entering um, a plane of oblivion in a moment, but basically the enemies are Daedra. So, just bear in mind, of course, killing Daedra, if you've got the Fighters Guild passives, if you get the killing blows, you will be the one that gets the ultimate gain. Up to 9 ultimate per kill, so that's very, very important. So utilize your ultimates throughout this dungeon. If it's big pulls, use that stuff. Don't save it till the end. Obviously, you can uh, build it up towards some of the bosses, but on these larger pulls, make sure you utilize it. Now, of course, we've got some scamps here, which do need to be interrupted. If they start channeling, bash them as soon as possible. Otherwise, they will put nasty flames across the ground. There are a couple of clan fears as well, which tank does need to grab really, really fast. They've got a new jump mechanic recently, or in the last couple of DLCs or so, actually, where they will actually launch themselves across the room at you and jump on your face. That's a heavy attack. It can be blocked, and it also can be dodge rolled as well. Now, this is three bosses into one. First of all, start with the melee boss. So hold him still if you're the tank and the group can basically burn him down on the spot. But you do have to be aware that he will spawn flame metronarchs during the fight, which can be chained in. And also he will do that big burst damage right there. When that's spreading, get out. Do not get caught by it. If you're a tank, it will knock you backwards. If you're blocking, and you'll probably be okay. If you're a DPS, you will die. So hold him still, stay out of the AOE, kill the flame metronarchs as they come in and you will be able to burn him over time. There are two other enemies in the room. One is a healer and one is a ranged uh, archer type. So they are going to be hitting us at the same time. So just be aware of that and make sure your healer is on point. Again, the tank should try and hold the boss as still as possible. And if it does come to a point where it starts slipping a bit and getting towards the portal or towards the water, just come back in and make sure you keep the boss in the dots at all times, if you can. Again, big burst, get out, it's gone, get back in again. Very, very simple in-out fight. He does have a nasty heavy attack and as a tank, you need to make sure that you block that. Next up is the Archer and the Healer. So basically you can pick whichever one you want. Interrupt any channeled effects that they fire. This guy has got heals and flame damage by the way, so be careful. The tank should be able to taunt it while everybody else stays behind it and deals damage or heals, whichever the two you're doing. He will teleport occasionally. When he does, he'll do a channeled effect and put fire on the ground. Again, you can interrupt this. He's got very low health. He's nowhere near as challenging as the melee guy at the beginning. Now the last one we've got left is the Archer. Teleport from time to time, so just keep an eye on him, and wherever he lands, just chase him down. You can interrupt his um, channeled abilities, but above all, again, make sure you stay out of the fire. Tank should hold a taunt and keep him still while everybody else hits him uh, from either the side or behind so that you don't get any frontal AoEs. Anything that lands on the ground, stay out of it. Especially that big circle that just landed, it splits into fours. Same as the last boss in um, City of Ash 1, except without all the the craziness going on. It's a very simple stack and burn scenario though. They're not that strong. The first boss is tricky. The archer and the healer or the mage is not really that bad. 
Now we go into the plane of oblivion. This is where it gets a bit nuts. Yes, there's a lot of fire in here. No, it doesn't matter if you're a vampire as long as you know how to stay out of it. All of us are vampires, in fact, in this group, including my stamina DPS and the healer. They're all, they're all vampires. Just stay out of trouble. Now, this is going to mean that you are going to have to pay attention to some very important mechanics, especially on ad pulls because they get really strong. Now, yes, there are ways to shortcut across some of these areas, but no, we're not going to be showing that because I don't believe in showing cheese. We're here to show the mechanics. Clan Fears jump. They are heavy attacks. Block it or dodge roll it. The tank needs to grab them as quick as possible. Now, the archer and the two-hander. Pay attention to that two-hander. It's the same mechanics as the boss we just fought. He will heavy attack and he will kill a DPS or healer if you are of low health or at the time if he catches you. So the key point to remember for anyone in the group, especially if the tank hasn't got hold of it yet, is to watch out for that two-hander. Block if he heavy attacks you. Neither the two-hander nor the archer can be chained, so you have to go to them. So the tank should taunt the two-hander and put it on top of the archer so they're stacked together. Again, there's a two-hander here. Be careful. Taunt everything, grab it in the middle, chain it up as much as possible. Make sure you pay attention to that heavy attack. And if it's on you, whether you're a DPS or a healer or a tank, make sure you block it. Otherwise, you are going into space and you will die. Don't run around the room. If you've got aggro, just get near the tank and let them take them off you. Again, another similar pull here. There is a two-hander behind me. I got caught, half health almost. That was lucky. And that was with a damage shield on me already as well. If I had no damage shield, that would have likely killed me. So be very, very careful and make sure you block those. Again, the clan fears do jump, so watch out. There is a healer at the back here. Healer, mage type. Make sure that you interrupt them if they're channeling anything. And in the meantime, the tank should be able to pull it in with the rest of the group. As much AoE on the floor as possible. However, you do want to save your ultimate in this particular room for the boss if you want to go for a burn. Because she can be a bit of a pain in the ass. She's very simple, but things can go horribly wrong if you don't pay attention. She's only got 3 million health, which is the same as a basic target skeleton. She doesn't really move around much, so the tank can hold her really, really still, but she does put a lot of AoEs down on the ground. Do not dance around the room. That won't help you or anybody else. What you need to do is find a gap and stand in it. So there's one AoE on the ground. That's pretty easy to avoid. Just stay out. During the fight, she will spawn several adds. As you can see, more AoEs stand in the gaps. The adds must be killed in less than around 10 seconds or so, because if you don't, she will call them back and she will heal based on how many adds are left. Very similar to the first boss in Maelstrom Arena. So every so often, she will spawn two adds, you have to kill them, and then go back to the boss again. Every time she tries to spawn them, however, and during the middle of the fight as well, when she puts her hand in the air, she will put negative AoEs on the ground full of fire. Simply stand out of them. As you can see, the group isn't running around in circles. We're just moving our feet a bit, get out and carry on. If you run around in circles, you are very likely to be uh, doing stupid stuff and running into stuff that is about to land, so just be careful. So to recap, hold her still, stay out of stupid, kill the adds. That's all you really need to do. If you don't kill the adds, she will heal. The only time she becomes a problem is if you're in a low DPS group. If that is the case and you do have low damage in your group and you don't have enough to burn her, make sure you always focus the adds first. Now you're going to see a lot of pulls like this, there's lots and lots of ad pulls in here, but you have to pay attention. Again, watch out for the scamps because they must be interrupted. The tank should grab the two-hander straight away and stack it on top of the archer, because remember they can't be pulled, and the archer will always stay at range. Stay out of the fire, be very careful of that spread and AoE, be sure to avoid the archer's conal effect, and if you do see it happen, try and interrupt. It's very, very important, again, that you pay attention to that two-hander because he will wind up a heavy attack as soon as he sees his target. So be very, very careful. Make sure you block if it's swinging towards you. And if you're the tank, again, same applies. You must block, but make sure you stack on the archer. Very similar pull here. Another two-hander. Make sure you block if he heavy attacks. And also watch out for the skeletons because although they're very, very low health, you can, uh, of course, kill them quickly, but they do explode. They have a nasty poison kind of bomb effect. It's not massive, but it does knock you back, and too much of it can cause you a problem. Again, same here, watch out for the two-hander, pay close attention to it, bash the archer and put the two-hander on top of the archer's head. Now you will notice that there's three Daedra that keep coming through here, over and over and over, three Dramoras in fact, and every time you kill them, they'll come in again and again and again and again. Now this will continue to happen until you go through the doorway at the very end of the, the walkway. So burn down whatever adds are here, Move on to the next phase, burn down the ads again, move on to the next phase over and over. Literally grab everything in the middle, stay out of the big spread in AoE. Don't focus the Dramoras, the, uh, the armored ones, the three that keep coming into the room. Just focus the ads that were static. 
Now, once they're down, then go through the doorway, and once you get past a certain point, they'll stop spawning. As you can see, they come again, there's even more. You can kill them, but then others will come through afterwards. So at this point, now we've got no more ads left except for them. Run through the door. This last ad pool here, make sure you save your ultimate. You are going to need it. Interrupt the healer. Make sure you block the two-hander if he hits you, and again, stack them all on top of each other. The tank should be able to grab the two-hander and stack it on the archer. This is the last point in which the Daedra keeps spawning, so make sure you burn them all down together. If you don't get past this point, they will keep spawning again. So get them down quickly. Once they're all gone, move on to the Bone Colossus. The Bone Colossus, by the way, is very, very, very dangerous. If you don't have full health and he turns on you, throwing a fireball in your face, you will die. So the tank has to make sure that he consistently holds him on the spot, turning away from the group. I haven't actually pushed forward, so this is a little tricky. Um, if we had have done, then the Dramoras wouldn't have spawned behind us, but because we stayed on the spot and didn't engage with the Bone Colossus, we got another spawn of them. So be very, very careful and try and avoid that. But if it does happen, just keep your AoE down. As long as the tank can pull them in without turning the boss, you will be just fine. And he's strictly not a boss, but he's kind of a mini problem, let's call him that. He's quite tough. He hits very, very hard, has a frontal AoE, a really big heavy attack, and he does spawn skeletons that explode. So stay out of his face, and for God's sake, if you are a tank, do not drop that taunt. The second you do is the second a DPS is going to die. Now, this boss, as in the Mega Jeff, there's a chest there sometimes, by the way. We deliberately forced this one to make sure that you could see the mechanics, but you can burn him really, really fast if you hide. have high damage and focus. But... What you really need to do as the tank is hold him still and everybody else needs to watch their feet. At set points of his health, loads and loads of Daedra or Dramoras will spawn and you will have to get rid of them. The more you pressure the boss, the more adds you will get. So what you want to do if you can, especially if you have low DPS in your group, is focus the boss, focus the adds. Focus the boss, focus the adds, rinse repeat until the third phase and then you can kill him. But he will stomp and breathe fire during these phases as well. So you have to be really, really aware of what's going on. Now, again, hold him as still as possible and don't face him at the group. Get your damage down, spread out, but do not run around the room. It will not help you. You will get in some serious trouble if you sprint around the room. You'll see that he does some nasty light attacks, which is fine. And then as he goes lower health, he'll stomp which will happen a few times and he'll do a nasty spread of like a, a quake across the room. As long as you have the tank turned away so the group don't get hit by the front of the boss, that will never actually affect the rest of the group. 75% is the first phase, that's when the adds will come in so you have to watch out. And then while the adds are there, he will continuously bang his fist on the ground and you can see these spreading AoEs affecting. As soon as you see one spreading, get away from it. As long as you're out before it expands, you're fine. Now, that can happen randomly, and also during that phase, he can breathe fire in the direction of the tank. Make sure, again, that you always have him turned away from the group. 50% is the next phase of ads, so again, make sure you focus them. The tank can chain them in and pin them, but you have to make sure that in doing so, you kind of peek around the boss's shoulder and don't uh, spin him around. 25% is the third phase. As you can see, we're now getting a little bit overwhelmed with ads because we pushed too much damage and you will have a room full of them. Now, if you can manage this, then by all means go for it, but if not, lay off the damage on the boss, manage the adds, and then go back again. Remember, when he stamps his foot, he's gonna do the nasty quake effect in front of him. When he breathes fire, he's gonna do a flame breath in front of him, and when he pounds the ground, you have to stay out of the spread and AoEs. Apart from that, it's boss, then the adds, boss, then the adds. Always keep the boss turned away from the group. So you can see here, we are making sure that we deal with the remaining adds before we go back on the boss and stay out of stupid. Doing so will mean basically you'll never take any damage, but it is really, really, really tricky. So be careful. Don't dance around the room, but do be aware of where your feet should be placed. Once the third phase of ads are gone, there's no more coming back, and it is over, and you can just burn the boss down till he's dead. Now, the next boss is a bit of a challenge, but we do have a lot of ad pulls in between. So you have to be very, very careful of what you're doing on the way up. We'll get the same kind of stuff as we saw before with the uh, two-handers and the archers and scamps and all that kind of stuff. But we'll also be introduced to some more flame atronarch types as well. Now, off to the left here, if you go into the doorway, there is a pie on the side. If you actually activate that, you'll go into a little sleep and then you'll wake up again and the story's over. But there is an achievement for that. So if you do want to get it, make sure you go into this doorway. It's off to the right. Go and pick it up. Now, um, the next area can be skipped by running across the lava. I would not recommend doing it because if you do so, you're going to miss out on a lot of the dungeon. Also, if you get out of the habit of cheating or skipping stuff, then of course, 
eventually if Zoss decide to kind of patch that way of avoiding some of the dungeon mechanics then you already know what to expect so just bear in mind of course that you can skip it if you really want to but I'm not going to show cheese and I would rather you see the mechanics for what they are now uh, this pull here lots of really really squishy stuff but we do have flame astronauts they can be pulled in you can chain them but watch out, there's a caster at the back, make sure you interrupt him. And again, the same as Flame Atronachs in every other dungeon. Once they die, they will explode where they land. So be very, very careful not to stay where they are after they die. As you can see here, they've been pulled in. Make sure that you kill them really, really fast with area of effect if you can. The taunt needs to be on them, of course, because otherwise they'll throw a nasty fireballs at the group. And as you can see, they explode on the ground. For a DPS or a healer, one... One burst will probably not be quite enough to kill you, but if you get caught by two at the same time, you will die. Another Flame Colossus, they really, really hurt. Spin that around, do not let it hit anyone in the group. He must be taunted the whole time. Keep your damage done from the back of the boss. If he spawns skeletons, obviously make sure they die quickly, otherwise they will explode. If they are going to explode, of course, just make sure that you move your feet out of them and you should be fine. We've got some damage shields coming in, so we've got a bit more protection than most, but generally just try not to get hit by them it's not massive damage but it it can be it can be quite nasty if you get caught by more than one he's got a couple more pulls before the next boss the next boss is going to take some serious coordination and some proper tanking so make sure that your tank is on point with taunts again this pull grab the two-hander stack them on one of the archers and you should be just fine if the archer is channeling like that make sure you interrupt also, if the two-hander is on you and you are not the tank, be sure to block. Always interrupt those effects, they're quite nasty. They don't hug up together unless the tank manipulates their positioning, which is a bit tricky and almost a bit of a waste of time for this particular area, so just burn them down individually and you'll be just fine. The next pull is a little trickier because we've got some more flame atros, and uh, they tend to want to aggro the DPS or the, the healers as you walk into this area. So make sure your tank goes first, grab everything they can, Pin down as much as they can. As you can see, look, they just ran straight for the DPS. Pull all the astronauts in together and put as much area of effect down on the ground as you can. But watch out for the two-handers. They kind of sneak in. One just went in from the top left, top right there, and one came in from the far right as well. They both heavy attack. They're both really, really nasty. Stack them together and stay out of the big bursts. If you get overwhelmed by those two and the three astronauts at the same time, you're pretty much dead. Now the Titan, the next boss is Humongous. He has a lot of fire damage. He has a lot of nasty ground effects, so you do have to watch your feet. Don't dance unnecessarily, just stand out of trouble when you need to. There's a very specific couple of phases in here, which are really simple to manage as long as you pay attention. First of all, at 65%, you can see the platform I just looked at there. And again, at 35%, that platform there, stuff is gonna happen. You can see bones on the ground, they are going to be Atronarchs that get kind of risen from the ground and the tank will have to manage them. So to start off with, the tank should grab the boss and taunt it and turn it away from the group so it's facing the lava. Then that way we can make sure that, of course that his flame breath isn't aimed at the group because if it is, you're going to die. So to start with, just position yourself around or behind the boss while the tank holds the boss still. If the tank runs, it's going to be a problem because your damage on the floor is going to be useless because it will walk out of it. Also, there are going to be phases where he will punch the ground, there'll be a nasty little knockback, and then straight afterwards he will erupt with kind of an area of effect around him, spread and fire that will go across the room. You've got two options, you can either weave between them if you're quick enough, if you're far enough back, or you can literally just block. If you don't do either one of the two, you'll get stunned and you'll take some serious damage. As you saw then, I got stunned to the ground. It won't necessarily kill you, but it will take you down far enough for these now landing meteors to finish you off. So your healer has to be on point if you get caught. Simply avoid the meteors just by moving your feet. You don't have to run around the room crazy. Like I said at the beginning, this phase here, 65%, he takes 10% damage to start with while he's raising the Atronach, as you can see the one to the left that's going around his front. The tank needs to taunt that straight away and take it away from the group while holding a taunt on the boss. Once the Atro is spawned, you can do normal damage again and you are fine to continue doing your DPS. At 35%, he will be stronger again, take 10% damage, nothing more, and move over to the other platform and raise the other Atronarch. So yes, now the tank has two to deal with. You can kill them, but they start off with a really big damage shield, so you can only get them really while they're weak. But the simplest way to manage it is for your tank to grab both of them, stay away from the group, and keep 
the boss taunted at the same time. So hold all three targets. The tank won't need to move that far. You can just move kind of left and right, left and right to keep the atros busy. But if you do run off, then of course the Titan will run with you and that becomes a problem to the DPS. So try and keep him as central as possible. Apart from that, during the fight, of course, as you saw, there's lots of AoEs landing on the ground. It's really, really obvious. Big, big circles that land. Just step out of it. Don't panic. He's really not that hard as long as the tank holds a taunt the whole time because then he won't focus on the DPS or the healers. This pull is very, very simple. We've got to open the, uh, or press a button actually, not open anything. We've got to press a button to lower the drawbridge. Uh, before that, we've got a few Daedra. Grab them all into the center, interrupt the range stuff, and make sure the Flame Atros above all are in the middle and dying fast. Do not stand in the Flame Atros feet, because again, when they die, they explode. Once this button is activated, which is just here, which I can't activate for some reason, the uh, drawbridge will come down and there will be lots and lots of skeletons. You can actually nuke these with a quick ultimate because if you get the kill and blows, you get all your ultimate back anyway. Nine per target. So just burn them really, really quickly with AoE. Failing that, get your tank in the middle and try and pin them while you do what you can to kill them. Two-hander here must be grabbed instantly. As you can see, just uppercut the tank. That is really, really nasty. So if you're the DPS and you cop that, you're going to probably die alongside all the rest of the damage that's coming in. So be careful. Above all, same as usual, interrupt the range, range stuff and pull everything else in together. Especially that healer. Make sure he's interrupted. Area of effects should do the majority of the damage, but it's all about position and the tank needs to hold them still. Now we are going to have to interact with a couple of more um, ad pulls, and then there's a bone colossus as well, or flame colossus. The same stuff as we've already seen, flame atros don't stand under their feet when they die because they explode. Scamps need interrupting, the clan fear needs to make sure that you block if they jump at you because they will, and of course the two handers and archers have to be dealt with. Two handers need to be taunted right away and dropped on top of the archer's head. Everything else should be held together and burnt with area of effect damage. If your tank drops a taunt on the big ones, the two handers, the clan fears, or the archers, or anything like that, do not panic. Move in towards the tank so they can take them back off you. Just stay out of stupid. When the archers fire at the ground, the fire will spread. Stay out of it. When the two handers kind of crouch a bit, they'll do a nasty spread AoE as well. Stay out of it. Above all, don't panic. It can get really messy sometimes because a lot of big ads, they do hit really, really hard. Just do not panic. If you start sprinting around, it's really hard for the tank to control aggro, and then you will end up in a mess. This bit can be skipped. Again, I'm not going to promote that. I will just show you what you're up against. So pull all these in together. Watch out for the clan fears because they will jump in from range, and also the atronarchs at the bottom near the, near the lava need to be pulled in as soon as possible. They can be chained, so they're not immune to CC or anything like that. So just bring them all in, keep your area of effect down, and above all, again, pay very close attention to the scamps because they do need to be interrupted, else they will put a nasty fire trail across the floor. If you don't see it coming and he hits you, you are going to die. It's really, really nasty. Now we have another Bone Colossus. Remember, there is an achievement for these. I think you have to kill 40 of them or so. Make sure that you don't skip this stuff because if you do kill them actively throughout your runs, you will eventually or inevitably, of course, complete that achievement. It's a really nice title for City of Ash as well. But I'll save that for your own view and you can go through your achievements by yourself. There's a really nice title for that. Deadlands Adept, letting people know that you've killed one of the hardest dungeons and got all the achievements done. Um, or one of the oldest, hardest dungeons. Some of the DLC stuff's a lot more challenging. Same again, you've seen this all before. Two-handers are not here in this particular fight, they're just archers. Get in, kill them, move on to the next, get in, kill them, move on to the next. Remember, the range can be taunted, but they won't come to you unless you're out of their range. So if you can manipulate that kind of range as a tank, then fine, go for it. But if not, just hold taunts and let everyone else kill them. Watch out for that fire trail, that will kill you, it's really nasty. Make sure the Bone Colossus is turned away from the group. If he is facing the group, he's going to one-shot them with a fireball and they're going to die. It's like 36k damage on a DPS or something. It's absolutely disgusting. So be really, really careful. Apart from that, stack and burn. Don't move him. You'll be fine. Now, we're going to go up against two mini-bosses that are very, very similar. And there's going to be lots and lots of adds as well. What I would highly recommend is that you use your ultimates on the first mini-boss. The second mini boss, focus on your rotations and the mechanics and do not use your ultimates. The reason for that is once the mini boss is over, there's nothing else except for him right there, Vulcan Scoria. He's the last one. You will see him in a moment. But once you kill the second mini boss, he's next. There's no ad pulls in the way, there's nothing. So if you burn all your ultimate on the second mini boss, you've got nothing to start the fight with on him. So I would recommend highly that you do not use your ultimate on the second mini boss. 
They are very, very similar to each other, except one is close range and one is not. Now, these three ads here, very simple. Burn them down, they let go of that little electric thing, whatever the hell that pylon type thing is. And you are now going to be greeted with a wave of enemies, a few waves of enemies. Remember, archers and two-handers cannot be chained. Everything else can. So position your tank nice and comfortable with as many minions that can be chained or pinned as possible, while the DPS go around the room and keep your AoEs down and finish off whichever is low health. It really counts if you can kind of cluster these up a little bit. Again, if you have anything chasing you and there's nothing else you can do about it, you can't kill it, but you think it's going to kill you, run to the tank. Don't run away, because if you do, you're going to die. It will just punch you in the back of the face. Two-hander, tank needs to grab this ASAP. Pull in whatever ad you can on top of it, but do not run away from it, except for when you dodge rolling out of that AoE. If you're a DPS, or a healer, or a tank, and that, that guy heavy attacks you, again, we've seen it before, I've explained it multiple times in this dungeon, you must block it. Atronarchs, same rules as before. Chain them in, taunt them up, kill them. Don't stand in them when they die. There's another wave coming in after this. Lots of skeletons, you've seen these already before as well. They do explode, so don't get clustered up with them too much. Make sure your healer's on point with the heals as well, because sometimes one DPS can be focused and you can get killed by multiple explosions. Stay out of the fire, kill the archer. As you can see, our tank pulled the archer across because he went out of his range, but it wasn't enough to actually stack with anything. So again, you will have to fight these individually. They can't be chained, but they can be interrupted. Anything that can be chained, just plant them on top of the big ones. Now we're going to have the boss, or the mini boss. This dude is very simple. Keep your damage on him and keep interrupting. He has some channeled effects that he'll sit there, he'll squat a little bit, he'll wind up this nasty channel, and then he'll emit lightning damage to the group. If you keep an eye on that, you can actually interrupt it. He had a pulsing uh, AoE then that he's going to burst. Just interrupt. Every time he tries to channel, just interrupt, and he can't do a damn thing. Keep a taunt on him, block the heavy attacks, interrupt everything he tries to do. Storm Atros will spawn during the fight. They can be interrupted to prevent their big burst area effect damage. But if you don't get there quick enough, don't panic. As long as the heal's down, you should be fine. But you do want to focus them. If you don't have a lot of damage in your group or the boss isn't nearly dead, focus them down. Otherwise, you can be overwhelmed with them and end up with around five or so, which gets really, really difficult. So that's mini boss number one. Like I said, during that phase, you are free to use your ultimate. I would highly recommend just doing as much damage as you can with your ultimates on that particular boss first off. Then, this next side, so there's a left, there's a right, and there's a center, as far as the stairs are concerned. The center's the last boss, left side is one boss, right side is the other. We're going up the right side now. As you can see, we are going to be greeted with pretty much the same layout as the other side. Three adds, a couple of ad pulls, and then the boss. Same rules as before. Get them down, the waves will start. Don't sprint around the room headless, however. If you get aggro, run to the tank. Although these guys don't actually hit you. The first wave don't attack you. They're just trying to channel that conduit type looking thing. I have no idea what it is. Some lightning stuff. Awesome. Um, next pull. Grab these in as soon as possible. If you're the tank, pin them all together. As you can see, he's already got his chains on. Everything's quite well uh, brought in together. It's not clustered as such, but there's enough room for us to get our AoE down, so that's fine. The next phase, we're going to get the nasties again, the big ones, the archers and the two-handers. Again, remember, they can't be chained, so it's all down to the tank to position them uh, as and when he or she can. Small stuff can be chained and pinned, bigger stuff can't. Two-handers do chain you, though, so be careful. <laughs> Stay out of the big stuff. If he's on you, block the heavy. You see, heavy attack me then, and I block straight away. That's fine. I've took barely any damage. If he had have heavy attacked me, especially when I'm that far away from the healers, I would have died, or close to at least. Stack them all up. Don't stand in stupid. Big boom, get out. Atro dies, get out. One more wave until the boss. Very simple, exploding skeletons and archers. Exploding skeletons, stack them on top of the archer if you can, unless they explode beforehand, and kill the archer as soon as possible. Make sure you interrupt the spray effect, however. That one that the other guy just tried to do over there, which was bashed by the tank. Anytime they try and do that, just bash them. The rest of it isn't that painful. Interrupt again and you're fine. Now, the mini boss. If you apply loads and loads of damage to start with, he will run backwards. So don't go too nuts, just get your dots on him. There's the run. He does it every single time. He'll pick a direction and just leg it. So get your dots down after he moves. But this is very similar to the last one. 
make sure you interrupt whenever you see him squatting. He will get adds, he will get the, the Storm Atros like the last guy does, but just keep your damage down, interrupt when you need to, and it will be fine. If you don't interrupt, it's going to be nasty lightning blast across the room and you will take serious damage. But if you are on point with your interrupts, he is literally just stack and burn. There's nothing to him. If you don't have a massive amount of damage and you can't kill him fast enough to avoid any of the dangerous stuff, of course, make sure you focus the Storm Atronarchs. He's going to end up getting stuck here at this rate. Interrupt every time he tries to channel. He has two channeled effects. He'll constantly try to do it throughout the fight. Just keep bashing, bashing, bashing. He won't ever be able to do a thing to you. Now, we kept our ultimates, and this is for good reason, because this boss does have a DPS check as such. What I mean by that is there, there is a requirement within hard mode to kill him within three pads, or kill him while there are only three pads around. Now, what I mean by that is in this room, you'll see there's a layout, and there's five platforms in the lava that are safe to stand on. And he'll jump from one to the next to the next after he blows them up. If there's no pads left, you will get nuked by fireballs and lava and all sorts of nastiness. However, hard mode, which is activated on this one, will remove two pads. So you only have three. If you can kill him by the time the third one explodes, then you will have hard mode achieved. If you die after or before that, obviously you'll fail. Now, yes, after the three pads have gone, if he's not quite dead, there are certain situations where you could probably get away with it and just finish him off. That will still count. But generally, after the third pad's gone, you're pretty much dead. Now, find your own space. As soon as a fight starts, he'll fire a fireball at a random player, so make sure you dodge roll. This is where you need to find your feet. He'll lay down fire on the ground just like the archers do, and you have to get in the gaps and not die. He will aim at people randomly with a fireball, which you can dodge, as you can see I didn't. And also sometimes he will aim at randomly and try to fossilize the target and put them into stone. If that happens, you can dodge roll it, or failing that, you can break free once it happens. But be very careful, stay out of the fire, you will have to wiggle a bit. As you can see, someone got turned into stone there beside me and broke free. After a set period of time, he will go to the center and smash his sword into the ground and try to break the platform. Once that happens, you need to get off and get onto the next platform. If you don't, you will lay in the lava and die. Now, when he teleports, he has a damage shield and he spawns some flame Atronarchs. Now, the Atronarchs can be chained in and they can die with AoE or you can focus them. It's entirely up to you. And again, we stack and burn. Not too much on the stack, however. You stay in the circle is what I mean. You don't go running around the room. Make sure you've got your own space. You can see we're kind of in a semi kind of formation where we've all got our own gaps, where we can see where the person is getting aimed at. So if you're all stacking on top of each other's heads, he will look in the direction of three people. If you are all in your own spaces, you can see when he's aiming at you. So again, mind your feet, stay out of the fire, and if he aims at you with a rock, you need to dodge roll or break free. If he aims at you with a fireball, you need to dodge roll. It's very, very simple. It is random. It's not the tank's fault if you get fireballed in the face. You have to be aware of that one. Smashes the ground again, get off, go on to the next platform. This is the last one. This is where you have to kill him. So I would save your ultimates on the middle pad for this, for the final phase. Pull in the flame Atronarchs. Again, when fire lands on the ground, it will disperse and you have to stay in the gaps. If he aims at you with a fireball, make sure you dodge roll. And if he aims at you with a rock, make sure you either dodge roll or at least break free if it gets you. Apart from that, you shouldn't have too much of a problem. It's all about the mechanics in this particular fight, not necessarily just burning it. You do have to break free, you do have to dodge, and you do have to watch your feet. The tank must never drop taunt because if you do, you will die because he has a nasty heavy attack and if the tank doesn't block that or you don't block that, you are dead. That is a key factor, by the way. Everything can be avoided or dodge roll, but that heavy attack must be blocked. Three pads, successful kill, that's hard mode complete. Okay, so hopefully that helped, hopefully that wasn't too boring, and hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to complete that particular dungeon. Do not panic. It is bloody hard. It is meant to be. It was considered one of the hardest dungeons in the game before any DLCs, and still now does still uh, pose a challenge for most groups out there. So don't be disheartened if you're struggling to start with. Just practice the mechanics, get used to where your feet should be, and you'll be just fine. Anyway, first of all, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. And if you are not subscribing, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you'd like to support outside the channel, there are some links in the description for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, the website, zynodegaming.com, where all the written guides are. And of course, Twitch, where I stream, uh, live stream, in fact, 10 p.m. UK time every single night. Once again, thank you all very, very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.